Hello YouTube and welcome back to Old Flads. This is Seven Days to Die. And we're back with the Alpha 7 sort of preview update thing that I'm trying to do at the moment. And today, after we saw the stealth yesterday, this was in fact the campsite that I was sneaking around. Got rid of that bad boy. And decided that I'd set up shop here. And it's been... It's not a bad place to do it, to be honest. It's on the cusp of... Dyersville, which is just north of us. We've also got the desert, which is just below us as well. It's not a bad place. And the reason that the desert is so important is because sand is now a a, a thing. It's, it's a real thing. Uh, so what I wanted to do today is show you some of the crafting and also some of the cooking that's come into this game. And as you can see, all the uh, nasty blockiness is gone. Everything looks very cool. I love the texture changes that they've made to these planks. Sort of give them a uh, far more natural flow. Looks very cool. Okay, on with the cooking. Now, cooking has been implemented in quite a strong way. And they went... It's gone, like, all the way away from what it was before, where you sort of found a stag. If, let's go and find a stag and see if we can do it. You may notice there's no zombies. I've turned them off for the for this particular episode, simply because they were just getting in the way. Uh, so we're going to go and find a stag, which will be up here. And I'm going to Daryl Dixon his ass. Okay, so there's a stag. Shot him in the ass. Didn't give a fuck. Uh... I mean, I've got to be honest, if, if someone had just shot me twice in the ass with a with a bow, I'd be pretty upset about it. Oh, oh so you did notice one of them, did you? This isn't a one-shot kill, so presumably those two did take an effect. Perhaps you're just buggy. Anyway, with a stag... Let's take a... <laughs> he took it as well, he didn't even care. Uh, with stags, usually, if you if you killed a stag and then searched it, there would be some steaks in there. And you'd then be able to eat those steaks. Pretty much to replenish everything that you've got within like all your all your all your food needs and uh, it used to do a lot of health as well. Now, however, you get this raw venison. And as you can see, I've collected some uh, pork and some rabbit as well for today's Presentation, so we say. So we've, we've killed our stag, we've given him the full Daryl Dixon experience straight in the ring piece, and now we're going to go over and we're going to do our cooking. Now, there are several types of cooking now, uh, all involving a campfire. If you don't know how to make a campfire, campfire is just uh, eight, eight stones going round in a circle, and that should give you a campfire. It did used to need a, a piece of wood in the middle, but it looks as though now it just needs six, sto uh, eight stones in a circle, and uh, you're golden after that point. So from there, you open up your campfire by you. you Put it down, obviously, uh, and then you open up your campfire by pressing E. Now we have this wonderful user interface, and I. I think this is probably better than Minecraft's with regards to actually cooking and how it sort of feels and, and overall the development of how this works. I think this is something that Daisy should really take notice of because I think this is a really, really clever idea. Okay, so to start off, on the left hand side we have fuel and that will be from coal logs and sticks so you can put in if anything that will burn essentially can go in there so we will put half of our trunk in there and it will give you a time that it will burn for which is 35 minutes in this case okay next up you need a way of cooking your particular meat and I'm only going to go through the meats although you can cook things like pies and stuff uh, specifically I think blueberry but uh, we, we won't go into them, there's, there's so many recipes it'd be unreal to try and go for it. Okay so to start off we're going to go with a sharpened stick. So with a sharpened stick it brings up charred meat types so we're going to go with a uh, some charred pork so we'll put that on the fire and that's going to make some charred pork. So we can cook that in, and as you can see in the corner but the same as with crafting there is a timer for it and this particular timer is 10 seconds, looks like 10 seconds a slab. So with that in mind, I'll just take that back off again, we've now got some charred, charred pork. Charred pork you've got to remember uh, and charred meats in general will smell quite a lot uh, and the zombies will pick them up so you've got to be aware of that. Okay so next up is our grilled 
stuff and we're going to grill some venison so we've got grilled venison here which i haven't done before so uh, we'll be able to just chuck that on now grilled venison smells a little bit uh, i've got to try and get this right the way round they are i think grilled smells less than charred but more than boiled so if you've got a grill which you'll find that they are dotted about i think they're actually more around the uh sort of cabins around lakes. I think that's where you're mainly fun. I can't even remember where I found mine. Uh, nonetheless, grilled venison. This has, does this have a 10 second time? No, this looks like it has probably a five second. No, it is a 10 second as well. But this will create a grilled venison and that will help mask the smell slightly, but I mean, you're still gonna end up with uh, qu quite a, a zombie attraction there. Lastly is the boiled, and in order to do that you need a cooking pot. Now, cooking pots also, and to do boiled food in general, you also need to get water that is from a jar, so purified. This water I have here is bottled river water, and uh, you can't use that straight away. So what you have to do is actually put that on the fire, and then cook that and turn it into pure water, it, bottled water it's called here. Once it's turned into bottled water, you'll then be able to use it for cooking. So it's like a sterilization process. And also if you cook, uh, if you drink the uh, water straight out of the river, it won't do as much for you as bottled water as, uh, will do as well. So we've got our bottled water there. So let's replace that. So we, now that we've got some bottled water, we can stick a piece of our rabbit on. And this will give us... Oh, I need to eat something first. Hold on. Let's just press I, get some of this pork on the go. We'll take, we'll leave some child pork. It gives a good idea of how much one piece will replenish. So that will replenish about, what are we going to say, a quarter. Let's see what grilled venison does with regards to our food. That replace, that probably did about a third to be fair to it. So grilled venison is currently better than charred pork. And we'll, we, have we got a boiled rabbit here? Right, we're going to cook a boiled rabbit now that I've eaten something. Uh, probably should have done it before. And this is boiled, okay? So this smells the least of the three. And this will... I don't know how this is going to react with regards to nutritional levels, but uh, if you can find a pot, this is probably the best, although most expensive way of doing stuff. Right, that's our rabbit. And let's get our rabbit out here. And we'll leave the pot in there because I do a lot of cooking with the pot anyway. So that's fine. That could stay there. So with regards to nutritional value, bearing in mind that the venison did about a third, we shall eat our rabbit, which looks surprisingly like the venison. And that probably did about the same as the venison. So it would appear that the grilled, uh, grilled meats, which are done on a sharp stick as your cookware, they do less sort of nutritional value than the grilled or in fact boiled. So it's probably worth taking that extra time to look for the cookware. Okay, so we're cooking out of the way. Uh, what? Oh, that's just going to burn itself out. Well, there's a piece of wood on there, that's fine. We're cooking out of the way. We're going to move on to how you get these glass jars because glass jars are now very, very, they're not very, very rare, but they're particularly rare and water is now such a big thing. Uh, that you're going to have to know how to get these. So, in order to make anything in Seven Days to Die now, and this is a forge, by the way, uh, I'll put a, a little picture up on the screen of how to make a forge, because it involves eight stone, eight, eight cobblestone, or eight stone, uh, and they're sort of, a, they're, they'd be in a, a, a three by three square, except for the top middle one missing, but you'll see a graphic anyway. Uh, and that creates a forge. Now in a forge you can do all your smelting, so uh, you, you can put your iron ore in there, you can put the crushed sand in there, which I need to explain as well, because the whole glass making process is quite a long one now. And from there you'll then make a mould for either your iron ingot, empty, empty jar, window pane, you, even when you're crafting stuff, now you'll need molds for things like the shotgun barrel the receiver on a sniper rifle that sort of thing but we're not going to go over that now we're just going to go through the basic stuff here so right molds molds are the first thing you're going to want uh, so we're going to need some clay so you get some clay and you just plonk them in a sort of rudimentary u shape and the initial sort of default one will give you an iron ingot 
mould. So that iron ingot mould will then be used with the forge to make iron ingots. So from the forge, press E, and then you'll need fuel again. Obviously, everything will need the fuel. So we'll stick, we'll stick that in there for yeah six minutes. Will be more enough. So from the, from that six minutes, you'll then need to put your mould over here, and then you'll need the raw material that you are in fact going to forge. So we've put iron ore in for now. What I'm going to show you though, with regards to the jars. Oh, actually, did you see? Can you see the uh, little log? in the bottom of the forge there, that's quite cool. Uh, could do with some uh, improvements with regards to its animation, but I like it nonetheless. With regards to making glass, uh, crushed sand comes from normal sand, so you put a block of sand in your in your crafting tarp in the middle, and then that will craft into crushed sand. Crushed sand then becomes the raw material for your glass and that that goes for all your glass materials the particular uh, mold i have here is of an empty jar mold same thing again you create a u-shape but this time you have to put an empty glass right in the middle of that empty u-shape so we'll just quickly chuck that in there and then the thing that you're trying to mold goes in the middle and that will create this empty glass mold empty glass molds then means that you have like the blueprint to make everything anything else uh, well it'll make glass jar molds for example but anything you put in there you'll be able to essentially re replicate uh, within the forge so from within the forge we've got our iron ingots here so we can take them out and uh, let's take that out of there uh, we'll remove the mold as well and we'll put in our empty jar mold now the metal type needed now I should explain this metal should say material and not metal um, uh, metal type needed is glass it says here it should say material type produced is glass uh, and material needed is crushed sand so a little bit of work needed for that on the uh, part of the devs but nonetheless I do really love this interface so I've put the crushed sand in there with my empty jar mold and it's now creating glass jars the glass jars of course you can take to a river uh, I've actually created a little thing over here of water. For some reason water's not like rendering for me. If anyone knows how to fix that then that would be great. Uh, you take your glass jar, go to the water, right click, that fills that up, drains half my water out, and then you've got your cook and you've got your river water, bottled river water, river river water, and then you've got to do the same thing again, the purification process. Chuck it in the pot, get your boiled water and cook we're gonna to have to put some fuel in there so that is the basics behind cooking wow that's bright that is the basics behind cooking and smelting and creating uh, creating initial molds hope you enjoyed that i'm going to be bringing you some more from the update because there is a lot to go through uh what i quickly do is tell you where you get iron ore from this is my hole that i've been digging on the floor here we've got a uh, basic stone, above us we've got dirt, in the dirt you'll also find the clay which is the clay you need to create the moulds uh, and this here is a vein of iron ore. Now because of gravel uh, that's been implemented you can take out gravel, gravity will then take the gravel down and it should help you create more natural seams, that's the idea anyway. So anyway thank you very much for watching, I've been Old Flads, this has been 7 Days to Die, uh, there was quite a long video and a lot of information to take on but I hope it helped. Anyway. Cheers and goodbye.